In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to control a Dynamixel AX Smart Servo Motor using a Dynamic Shield and an Arduino Do. Dynamixel servos are networked using a half duplex transmission protocol. This means that you can connect them together to send and receive data. However, since it's half duplex, it's not possible to just hook this up to the normal serial lines and talk to it. In this video, I'll be using an Arduino Do as a microcontroller. One issue with the do is that it runs at 3.3 volts and is not 5 volt tolerant. So you can't just connect Dynamixel servos directly to your do without frying it. Dynamic Shield is a board that fits over the top of the Arduino that gives you a lot of options for interfacing with sensors and servos. It level shifts the do signals so you can use them to control the smart servos. It also has built in circuitry for using the half duplex protocol of the Dynamixel. I'll power everything from the power connector and the shield. So you need to make sure the jumper J6 is connected. You can see that right there. This will ensure that the power to the shield feeds the VN of the Arduino to power it as well. Also, you'll need to make sure that the four jumpers of J19 are connected to ensure that the power is supplied to the dynamic cell connectors. You can see these here. Next, we need to plug in a Dynamixel servo to the shield. These connectors are polarized, so you can't plug them in the wrong way. Then let's plug in a 12 volt DC supply to the shield. For this demo, I'm using a 1 amp supply that's sufficient for a few servos. But you'll need a bigger supply if you want more than a few. I typically use a 5 amp supply at a minimum. When I plug the power in, notice that the little red LED here will flash, signaling that the power has been supplied to it correctly. Finally, we just need to hook up the programming port of the Arduino to the computer so that we can program it. And that's it for the hardware side. Now let's take a look at the sketch that will control it. You can find this sketch in the GitHub repo for Dynamic Shield. This is located at github.com slash neurorobotic tech slash dynamic shield. There's a link provided in the text description of this video. You'll either need to clone this or you can download a zip of the entire repository. Once you have this, the first thing you need to do is to copy the Dynamixel serial class from the Libraries folder of the repo to where your Arduino ID can find it. On Windows, this is Documents, Arduino, and Libraries. Then let's start up the IDE and load the Dynamixel Test Move Sketch from the Sketches folder in the repo. The first thing this sketch does is include the Dynamixel serial library that we just added. Then it defines the ID of the servo that we'll be controlling. Each Dynamixel servo is assigned an ID for controlling it. You can also use the Dynamic Shield to reset the IDs to what you want. We'll look at this more in just a bit. Next, we create our Dynamixel serial object. By default, this class assumes you'll be using the serial one line of the Dynamic Shield. However, you can pass in a pointer to a different hardware serial line for custom projects that don't use the Dynamic Shield. Next, we start up our debug serial line and then call the begin method of the Dynamic Serial class. By default, it uses a 1 megabaud rate and pin 22 to control the half duplex system. You can set your own values here if you need to as well. 
Next, we reset the position of the servo to the center with the Move command. This will move the servo to the target position as quickly as possible. In the loop method, we call the Move to Position function. We'll be moving the servo back and forth between 450 and 650 at different speeds. A speed of 30 for the first one and 150 for the second one. The speed and position values range from 0 to 1023, but setting 0 for the speed effectively disables the speed control and it will go at maximum speed. Now let's look at the move to position function. You specify the servo, the target position, and the target speed. The first thing it does is call the move speed method of the Dynamixel serial class. Unlike the move command, this one lets you specify a speed as well. We then call the read position command to query the servo for its current position. We then compare that position to the target position to see if we're within three units of our target position. If we are, then we exit. If not, then we continue in our while loop. The first thing in the while loop that we do is to read the position and then read the speed. You have methods on the class to query pretty much every property on the servo from load to temperature. You also have methods on it to set most of those properties as well. After the position is read, it's compared to the previous one to see if it's moving. If the servo does not move within five steps, then we need to resend the move command because there may have been an error while sending it. It then prints out the current position and speed, delays for 100 milliseconds, and then goes back up to the while loop to start this over again to see if it's actually met its target position. Once it's reached its target position, it exits. Now let's see the sky in action. First, go to the Tools menu and make sure that you have your board set to be the Arduino Do programming port. Finally, in the port, make sure that you've connected to, to the correct port. Then hit the Download button. and we see our servo is moving. If you look at the serial monitor, it resets it and then it starts printing out the current position and the speed. You notice that we have one section here where it's going around 150 and then another section where it's going at 1050 something. And that's because the value that's reported back on the speed is different depending on whether it's going clockwise or counterclockwise. So on the one where it's going 150, it's reporting back that value. And the one where it's going 30, 30, it's 1023 plus 30, which is around 1050. Now let's add another dynamic cell to the project. Before we do that though, we need to change the ID on this servo. Dynamic cells come from the factory with the default setting of one. So if we just plugged in another one right now, we would have two of them with the same ID, and that wouldn't work correctly. Let's load the set dynamic cell servo ID sketch from the sketches folder of the repository. This sketch is similar to the last one, but its focus is on setting the ID to a new value. At the top are constants where you can enter the ID that the servo has now and the new one that you want it to have. We then have the code for starting up the dynamic serial class. The sketch then waits for you to type something and send it before proceeding. Next, we have some code that is commented out. If you would like to reset your dynamic cell servo back to its factory default settings, then uncomment out these lines before downloading it. It then calls the setID method to change the ID assignment of the servo. Then to make sure it worked, it moves the servo a few times with the new ID and then resets its position back to centered. 
If you run this and don't see your servo moving, then something was wrong. Let's change the old servo ID to 1 and the new servo ID to 2. Plug the power back into the, the shield and then download our sketch. Then start up the serial monitor. As we see, it says press any key and click to send to reassign servo. We press something, do that, and immediately we start seeing our servo moving. And it's centered again. So this servo now has an ID of 2. Now let's plug in a new servo that has the default ID of 1. As you can see on the back, each Dynamixel servo has two slots, one for connecting up to a board and another for connecting to a different servo. Plug that one in there, then plug this one in here, then let's open our Dynamic Cell Test Move sketch again. We'll add a second servo ID and give it two. Then we'll recenter it. Change our text just a little bit. So we're going to be moving servo 1 to 450 and 1 to 650. Then we'll move servo 2 to 100. At speed of 50. And move servo to 850 at a speed of 80. Then let's change it so it also prints out which servo it's moving. Alright, then upload the sketch. And we have both of our servos moving between different positions and different speeds. Now, instead of daisy chaining, let's move one of the servos from being connected to this one to being connected directly to the shield. So we can control them through the daisy chain or by connecting them to the shield or even through a hub which I'll show here in just a second. So to demonstrate how to use the hub, first let's go ahead and um and power everything down.
Then we're going to disconnect disconnect our servos. Then we need to remove these jumpers here at J19. These jumpers are what's supplying the 12 volt power to the dynamic cell connectors. So once I unplug these, the dynamic cell connectors on the shield will no longer be getting the 12 volt power supply, but they will still be getting the signal and the ground connection. So instead of connecting the servos directly up to the shield, what we're going to do is use one of these little hubs. So we want to connect our dynamic cell up to this hub, and this time we'll daisy chain it and connect it up to the other dynamic cell. Then finally we'll take and connect our hub up to the shield. Okay. Now that we no longer actually need to power our servos directly from the shield, we can just use our USB to control, uh, to power the, the shield and the Arduino, and then we'll use the power connector on the hub to actually power our servos. we go. Now we've got an independent power supply for this particular dynamic cell connector that's, con that's powering these two servos. We could also have another hub connected to this one, to this one, and to this one, and power them all from different batteries if we needed to, to distribute our power supply. So in this video I've shown you the basics of how to control and query a set of dynamic cell servos using the dynamic shield for Arduino Do. If you like this project, then please support my Kickstarter so I can make this product available to the public. Thanks for watching.